Hey there all you girl travelers. Seeing as I've been getting some responses or comments from you all, you've been watching my videos on eating street foods, I've been wondering how I don't get sick off of some of this. First of all, I have gotten sick, but let's save that for the end because there's more that I want to add about it. Today I thought I'd go ahead and share some myth busters as well as um, some street food tips on how to avoid getting sick when you travel. Uh. There are many countries out there in which the drinking water is unsafe or unclean. Sometimes food is prepared in a very not so hygienic way. We're going to start with the don'ts. So avoid drinking tap water. Any type of water that you're going to ingest or that's going to go into your mouth, you're going to want to make sure it's already been filtered or clean. You're going to want to invest in bottled water. And that goes for even when you're brushing your teeth. Another alternative is to invest in a stirrupen or a life straw or like in India, I got a little travel boiling wand where I could make my own tea and boil my own water. You're going to want to invest in those kind of things. Anything that helps filter your water or purify it. Uh, so that it can be clean drinking water. Don't eat anything that's been washed with tap water. Raw vegetable salads are out. In many cases, even in restaurants, they're not gonna go ahead and use bottled water or filtered water just to wash the vegetables. They're probably using tap water. However, you can eat vegetables that have been cooked, that have been steamed, that have been boiled, that have been stir fried. All of that is fine. Avoid taking ice. If you're in a restaurant and they serve you a Coke, with ice. You're going to want to avoid the ice. You don't know if the, the ice has been made with um, purified or uh, filtered water versus tap water. There's certain big chain restaurants like McDonald's or Subway in which I kind of do trust the ice a little bit more. You know that they never want to hear any kind of review like I got sick out of a bad ice in McDonald's. Now backdoor tip is to inquire with locals about what ice is the good ice if there is one. In Thailand recently I discovered that there is a good ice and a bad ice. And the good ice, you know, tended to be like a tubular round uh, ice that was processed by a company through filtered water. It's been known that the tubular ice is okay, is safe to take in your water or your drinks. Next up, you want to avoid anything that's been laying out for hours. Anything also that has been collecting flies. You don't know what kind of germs have collected or if the meats out there have been spoiled. If it's coming off the streets, I would naturally avoid any types of meats. Now for me, that's easy to say. I don't eat meat, but for people who love their meat, I would make sure that the meat's kind of fresh. You can see it being cycled in. It's being cooked properly, letting your guard down. If you're a frequent traveler and you're pretty confident, or you're staying in a certain area for a good length of time, there's a propensity to let your guard down on things and be like, eh, you know, I, I've been fine with that before, I'll be fine with it now. When you let your guard down because you feel familiar with an area, you feel confident, you've already experienced certain things, that's kind of when sometimes you actually get sick. Sometimes the short-term travelers actually have it luckier because they're kind of like doing short spurts in different cities and they're super like tight about or guarded about not getting sick and so they don't want to try that. Maybe they'll try this. They're, they're very reluctant and they try to stay very safe. Now we get down to the do's. Do take vegetables in which you can peel or doesn't require washing. Oranges, bananas, apples. I personally love to shop at local fresh markets and that's because I can see the arena of vegetables and fruits out there. A lot of times I'm walking away with at least a kilo's worth of say oranges. Sometimes I've even gotten into like pineapples. I'll buy a knife and I'll cut the pineapple for myself. These are all ways that you can control the kind of foods that you're eating and the fruits and making you, you can make sure that they're safe. Make sure that the food you buy is freshly cooked and is served hot. If I'm taking tea or if I'm, you know, ordering a soup, I'll kind of like slyly dip my pinky inside to see how hot it is. I usually like them a little bit closer to hot. Um, and that just lets me know that it's already past that threshold of safety where, you know, the water's been boiled to the extent of killing off all the bad stuff. I have gotten sick in the past off of a street samosa that was sitting out for a while. That one little samosa was actually a big deadly beast because that gave me a parasite that was in me for a good whole month. Never underestimate the size of your foods and never underestimate the worth of their temperature. Say yes to the food tours. These days I tend to take food tours a little bit more than I used to and that's because it's been helpful for me in developing the confidence and courage of understanding food and food choices when I enter a new strange and foreign city. Sometimes you can even ask your guides 
about um, food tips, about how to find good foods or how to find safe foods. These days, I try to take a food tour in cities that I know are like foodie capitals or that I really want to experience the food in, but know that I don't have the confidence or guts to try something without knowing about it. I've noticed that after I've taken my food tours, I'm definitely a whole lot more confident in trying foods out there, um, even if I don't know them. It's because I understand a little bit more about the country. Do eat yogurt. Now the kind of yogurts I'm talking about are good probiotics. They are actually the homemade ones or the ones that are closest to homemade, not the commercially processed ones. Yogurts are especially good for if you've, you've gotten sick and you've already taken your meds, the, the meds have stripped the, the lining in your stomach of any good bacteria um, and now you're not processing your food or digesting it as well as you used to. Yogurt is perfect for putting those that good bacteria back in your stomach. Observe. Observation is key. A lot of times before leaping into a food stall, I will try and observe it for a good length of time. The beauty of eating on the streets or eating street food is the fact that you can actually see how vendors make their foods. You can see whether or not their practices are hygienic. Are they washing their, their vegetables with water? Are they washing their dishes and utensils in recycled water? All these things help inform you about whether or not you want to go ahead and eat at that stall. One thing that I always like is when the vendor has biodegradable or um, disposable dishes. And that's ideal because obviously it's no other person has used it. I will always keep my eye out for the food stalls that are the most popular um, with locals. And you'll see them because you'll see locals like crowded around that area. It means one or all of three things. The food is good, the food is cheap, and it's safe. Another clue that I like to use is I look for families little kids and young adults and teens. This demographic right here generally has to be safe about the foods they pick and they tend to be choosy about about that too. Of course the mothers they have to make sure that their kids are eating something healthy and safe. They don't want their kids getting sick they're going to be a lot more particular. If there's a populated stall full of single men then I kind of think that through a little, a little bit more. So with street food you're definitely going to take your chances but whether or not those chances are going to be any greater than like your hotel restaurant, that kind of remains to be seen. Even in the United States, people get sick at restaurants. I have friends that get food poisoning from restaurants, bad fish. Sandwich with mayonnaise has been staying out for like hours in the hot sun. The second time I got sick, the second time, I got sick off of restaurant buffet food from a tour. That was the recent trip where you see me going to the hospital. That, that's this video right here. It feels kind of sensitive, like, I, like I'm bruising it. So that goes to show you it's not only street food that you can encounter getting sick. It's anything is fair game. Now say you get sick because sometimes that's inevitable when you travel. One of the biggest fears uh, for female solo travelers especially is the idea of getting sick while you're abroad and having no one to help you. I've gotten personally sick two times in my life, India and Thailand. Those two places I already know how to get sick in. When you actually go through it, you realize it's not that bad. You find ways to get through it and your ability to be resourceful and get through it builds a certain kind of confidence. After the first time I encountered it, it gave me a confidence and awareness that I could handle the situation if, I, if it ever happened to me again. I already knew that there were resources that I could look out for. One, there's always gonna be someone to help me because I'm gonna ask for someone to help me. Two, that if it gets really bad, I will look for the nearest hospital. Three, that there are pharmacies out there that are equipped to handle what I'm experiencing. If I'm going to a country like India, and yes, India is synonymous for the term Delhi Belly. Because it occurs so much, it doesn't only occur with tourists, it actually occurs with locals too. Now, if this is a sickness that happens frequently and often, then you know what? The pharmacies are gonna be aware of how to handle it. They're also gonna be well stocked. Cipro happens to be available over the counter I know in India and Thailand so far because those are the two places where I've sought it. And the more I become comfortable with knowing what my resources are, the more easily I'm able to handle it. The second time I got sick, immediately I went, well, you know what? 
I'm not gonna deal with this, I'm gonna go straight to the hospital. Last tip of all is, if you really feel uncertain and unsafe, travel insurance. I'll put a link down below what travel insurance I've used um, in the past. I'll probably do a video in the future on travel insurance if anyone is interested in this. Just for now, travel insurance is a good thing to have if you feel like you're you know, gonna go to a country which you know nothing about. Um, if, you like, if you feel like you might run into unsafe situations, then please seek that out. Until then, travel safe, smart, and fun. Later, girl, be with you.